Hi, I'm Jim Matthew Sadler, and welcome to this next instalment of the games between Frank Marshall and Emmanuel Lasker. Um, yeah, I mean, although they were very long time rivals, um, there were big gaps in the in the games between uh, Marshall and Alaska, and that's uh, well due to uh, stuff like the First World War, of course, um, but also due to the fact that Alaska really didn't play very much. He had uh, very long periods away from chess, and then all of a sudden he'd come back and play, you know, like a, an absolute genius. It's it's quite amazing, really. Um, this game was played um, quite a few years after their World Championship match uh, in 1907. And uh, it was played in 1924 in um, the New York International Tournament. Um, Marshall gave uh, gave Lasker a pretty good run for his money uh, in the in the two games they played. Um, the the game that Emmanuel Lasker won as white was uh, was a great game, really nice, uh, interesting game. Although Lasker was always uh, a bit on top, but there were some great ideas from uh, from Marshall. Um, and this game, yeah, Lasker came very very close to uh, to losing. Um, so, yeah, and it's a very, very, very interesting game. So uh, let's have a little look at it. Um, we start off with d4, d5, c4, c6. C takes d5, the exchange Slav. Maybe not what you'd expect of, a, of an attacking player like Marshall, um, but he played it uh, for all of his career with good results. And, um, well, actually, I mean, if you consider um, that someone like Botvinnik later took it up with uh, extremely good results, you know, some uh, some classic wins against Tal or Pomar, then, um, well, I think it's another good example of uh, of Marshall's knack of finding, uh, yeah, good opening systems. He had a good feel for the uh, for the opening. If you think of, uh, of all the stuff that he's, uh, that, you know, that bears his name, that's still... Uh, um, you know, actual uh, nowadays, you know, the Marshal in the Rai Lopez and the uh, the Marshal Gambit in the Semi Slav are just uh, are just two examples. So Marshal played this move Queen B three, which is quite uh, quite exotic. Um, it, it's it's a bit weird maybe to play it uh, so early, but uh, it is based on a good positional idea. Um, when it's DVD on the um, Exchange Slav, uh, the English GM Simon Williams explains that you know one of White's advantages is um, well the, the White can try and get you know in return for his uh, his extra tempo in this symmetrical position is um, a better developed um, Queen's Bishop. So this Bishop on C1 could be developed to F4, and we could try and stop the Black Bishop from developing itself to F5. And this move queen b3, well, it achieves that by um, by uh, attacking b7 and stopping the bishop coming to f5. It's a little bit early because, you know, black could also uh, just try and hit the queen with knight c6 to a5. Um, but, um, you know, although it's a little bit exotic, it's, um, it's you know, based on a good positional idea. Um, so Lasker uh, didn't do anything spectacular. He went e6. So actually uh, kind of justifying this move of, uh, of Marshall's. Bishop b7, e3, and then knight h5, chasing this bishop on f4. And uh, now we get a, um, a little episode that's, that's quite typical of, uh, of Queen's pawn opening. So black attacks the bishop on f4, wants to exchange off his knight for the bishop. White says, well, okay, but we'll do it on my terms, and offers uh, you know, the exchange of the bishop on, on g3. Uh, the point is after knight g3, h takes g3, well, why gets this open h file and possibilities of attack against the, the black king if uh, if it castles there? So uh, black castles, bishop d3, f5. And now white decides that the situation has changed a little bit and, um, uh, and starts moving his bishop again. I mean, one of the ideas might be um, f4 from uh, from black, although that's a little bit risky. You know, that uh, once you've played f5, uh, playing f4 afterwards... Um, you've lost a little bit of pawn cover in front of your king, and that b one h seven diagonal is quite uh, is quite open. But um, but White plays bishop e five, so offering the exchange of the bishop for the other knight. Um, the idea would probably be to take back with a pawn when this knight on h five is offside. And then when Lasker brought his knight back to f six, aiming for knight e four, Marshall took on f six. So it's quite um, quite weird in actual fact. This you know bishop f4, bishop g3, bishop e5, bishop f6, and uh, you know at every stage you know white seems to be you know either trying to avoid an exchange of uh, of the bishop for a knight or uh, and then doing it. You know it's uh, it's all quite weird, but it does have an uh, does have a point. 
<coughs> Pardon me. Now, in a similar position, um, actually later in the tournament, Capablanca played the same concept as uh, as Marshall, and here against Lasker as well. And here Lasker took back with a G pawn on F6. Uh, he probably suffered so much with a knight coming to E5 against Marshall that he felt he should control it. Um, interesting idea. Um, and um, I mean, you know, um, Capablanca won a fantastic game against Marshall. Uh, against uh, Lasker, rather, but you know it was uh, the game itself was quite um, was quite fraught. Um, I think if you did it in this position when White hasn't castled yet, then uh, a move like well G4 maybe immediately or after preparation with H3 would be quite uh, quite scary. Um, so here Rook takes F6 seems quite normal. Rook C1, Bishop D6, and now a funny episode Knight A4. Um, yeah, I mean you know why did uh, Marshall do this straight away? Um, rather than castle first. Who can tell? But um, um, Lasker went queen a5 check. Um, and then Marshall uh, recounts in his uh, book of selected games he didn't like to play a move like king e2. Maybe this was his original uh, intention, but knight b4, bishop b1 and b6 looked a little uncomfortable. Although it's not, you know, strictly 100% clear, uh, because, you know, although you're going to get in bishop a6 check, um, that queen on a5 is a little bit uh, short of square. So if white goes knight c3 and then a3, might be able to uh, to cause black a little bit of inconvenience as well. But um, but you know, yeah, I can understand that um, that uh, that Marshall didn't uh, didn't fancy that. So he just went knight c3, and um, yeah, I think here Lasker got a little bit um, I don't know confused or maybe irritated. Um, I mean, I've had this practical situation quite often in my career that, um, you know, you, um, you you feel that the opponent misses a move, knight a4, queen a5 check, um, and then he just moves back and you've gained a move, but you don't actually know what you want to do with it. I mean, actually, this queen on a5 is not well placed. Um, it needs to be on, on a square like e7, you know, sort of... Uh, um, uh, you know, combining nicely with um, with with the rest of Black's position, and uh, you know, maybe assisting some uh, some play on the king side. Um, also, you know, just uh, protecting some uh, some of the weak squares in inside Black's position, supporting g7 to g5. On a5, it's not doing a single thing, but somehow Lasker couldn't bring himself to uh, to you know to bring the queen back. So you really have a feeling that he's trying to you know justify it uh, in some way. Um, and actually just ends up getting into a tiny bit of a tangle there. So he plays rook b8, uh, castles, bishop uh, a6. And after knight a4, bishop d7. So, you know, he's tried to, uh, you know, to play some developing moves um, without bringing the queen back to d8. Um, but after knight c5, um, this was a tiny little bit awkward. Um, the knight's attacking the, the bishop on, on d7. And as Alakin points out in the tournament book, excellent notes. Um, after bishop e8, um, then um, white can actually simply play knight b7. Looks a bit uh, a bit too risky, but the point is after here, takes here, rook b3 and knight e8, and then knight takes f6 and a takes b3, and that's just a massive amount of material for white. So, yeah, Lasker played queen c7 to uh, to hold everything, b7 and d7. And um, but that queen is not great opposite the rook on c1, and here he got hit by this move knight e5. Um, so yeah, I mean any moves involving yeah taking with a knight on e5 are just uh, well going to lead to some trouble just because of the opposition of the uh, of the rook on c1 and the queen on c7. So um, well, Lasker played uh, uh, the move bishop b8. But this gave White the opportunity to play f4 and consolidate his knight uh, in the centre. And obviously, you know, if, if the queen had retreated to uh, to d8, then there would never have been a problem. But um, yeah, with the queen on c7, White got this extra opportunity. I mean, from the black point of view, I mean, black's general idea is to advance on the king's side, you know, with something like g7 to g5. So from black's point of view, you know, you could sort of say that, well, that f pawn's got closer to the black position, so it's then easier to attack. Um, but in general, you know, the fact that White's entrenched his knight on e5, you know, for free almost, um, you know, I mean, that's a, that's a very nice thing for White. I mean, this position is is, is very interesting in actual fact. Um, you know, I mean, first of all, White's put his um, his pawns and pieces in a in a pretty, you know, 
a manner of which Capablanca would be proud. You know, Capablanca always said, if you've got a bishop of one colour, put the pawns on the opposite colour. And that's exactly what White's done. You know, put the bishop on d3 and the central pawns are on d4, e3 and f4. Um, and that also is a very nice structure for restricting black's two bishops. You know, the pawns on d4, e3, f4 restrict the dark squared bishop and black's light squared bishop is, um, well, fighting its way around the, um, uh, the black central pawns on d5, e6 and f5. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, White's also got um, a lot of nice pressure on the um, um, on the black position due to these knights on c5 and e5, you know, using the outposts of the d4 pawn. The knight on c5 is attacking a6, b7, and also e6. And this knight on e5 is attacking c6, and also, you know, controlling squares like g6 and f7, which, you know, makes it hard for... Um, uh, for for black to develop freely on the uh, on the king side. Now some very interesting stuff happened in the next um, number of moves, but so we, we're going to just play through that, um, and then we're going to take a look at what's happened and and try and understand it. Um, so white went a three, which uh, is uh, um, a good strategical move, as Alakin points out. The idea is simply retreat the queen on B, uh, re retreat the queen from B three, play B four, consolidate yourself, and then you know just quietly prepare to uh, to gain space on the queen side by playing you know A four and B five. Um, and Lasker got his plan in with uh, with G five. So uh, Marshall did some consolidating, you know, rook on the second rank, defending H two, uh, supporting the F four pawn, King H eight, Queen D one. And G takes F4. And now there's this, uh, you know, this very interesting moment um, where if you're, um, you know, if you're just playing through the game quickly, you sort of, you know, expect G takes F4, don't you? I mean, that looks like a very natural, solid move, keeping, um, you know, white structure uh, intact, keeping the, uh, the dark squared bishop under wraps. But actually, um, first of all, in this position, this um, uh, simply loses tactically because uh, black plays knight takes e5, um, f takes e5, and queen g5 check and picks up the e3 pawn. I mean, you could insert bishop h5 first of all as well if you want, but I mean, this is the basic idea. Um, yeah, I mean, black is just actually uh, actually winning there. Um, so that's one thing. Um, so in this position, white... Uh, played this move, knight takes c6, Lasker took back with the b pawn, uh, which you can argue about, and Marshall took with the e pawn. And uh, yeah, this can catch you by surprise if uh, if you're just playing through the game, you can sort of think, isn't this isn't this weird somehow? You know, um, but it, it says something you know fundamental about uh, this position, and also about the strengths and the weaknesses of White's position. Let's go back. Um, here, in actual fact, um, I mean, if you look at White's position, you know this um, uh, this pawn, pawns on d4, e3, f4, they're playing a great role in restri in restricting Black's uh, uh, position, whole position. You know, the bishop on d6, and queen on e7, these dark squared pieces are really restricted by um, by this pawn uh, structure. However, you know, um, it's it's quite static. You know, if White, when, when it's White's turn to try and make something of his advantage, he's going to have to move forward, maybe exchange some pieces, move some pieces, um, maybe even loosen up his pawn structure. Then that dark squared structure, you know, does come under strain. Um, it can come under strain, you know, as, as you saw in, uh, you know, with this line with G takes F4. And that's the moment when, you know, when White's position can get very weak, when he's, the moment when he's trying to, make something of his advantage might be the moment when he's most vulnerable. And of course, you know, by playing moves like g5, hitting at the, um, uh, at the, uh, um, at the white structure, then, um, uh, then black's doing his best, you know, to sort of erode the, uh, the, the fundaments of, uh, of, of white structure there. Um, now the interesting thing about this move, uh, e takes f4 is that actually this is fundamentally correct. Um, I mean, if you look at um, at Black's position, he's got this rook on b8 and the rook on h6. Those two rooks are disconnected. They're not coordinating at all. Um, so, you know, um, and uh, in this position, for example, um, then um, Black can't fight for the uh, for the open c file here uh, because he's only got one rook uh, in play. That rook on h6 is completely on the other side. I mean. 
his pieces he's he's got you know um strength on both sides but it's not it's not it's not combined strength so there's a you know it, it, it's not uh, it's not very strong it's not really going to do that much damage for um uh, for white now if we allow the um uh, the g file to be opened then all of a sudden black can combine the strength of his major pieces i mean this rook all of a sudden um you know it can it can get all the way over to g8 and uh, and black can really combine the um you know the power of his queen coming into h4 the rook already on h6 and the other rook coming to g8 so white does not want to play a move like g takes f4 you know he wants to play a move like e takes f4 which keeps the king side reasonably closed um and uh, and doesn't give black a chance for um uh for an extra uh, an extra uh, file through which to attack and of course you know e takes f4 um does have a number of other advantages you know the pawn on e6 now is uh, is very very weak you know and this gives white a, a very good target and in actual fact it's not that easy uh, for black to prosecute his attack i mean as we'll see in the game uh, Marshall came up with this uh, this excellent plan of you know putting the queen round to um, uh, to e3 to cover d4 and also cover g3 and then afterwards the um, you know the black uh, queen side pawns are very very weak. I mean this move b takes c6 you know was um, uh, was maybe a little bit funny. I mean you know bishop takes e6 is a little bit more natural, but even then I mean white's going to play e takes f4 and white's going to do exactly the same as he did in the game play the queen to e3 to consolidate everything and probably play the knight back round to d3 to e5 great central square um attacking the bishop on c6 and when the bishop moves away white's going to ex expand on the queen side or even double up on the c file and come in there and it's very hard for black to um to do anything on the king side um i mean actually um there's a couple of you know points here where where both players were, were rather inaccurate i mean first of all um uh Lasker missed, missed a fantastic chance with uh, with g takes f4 um because um after g takes f4 knight takes e5 uh takes and rook g6 check is again um well rather worrying uh for the king uh if king h1 i'm going bishop takes c5 Rook takes c5 and queen g5, attacking e3 and threatening queen g1 mate. Amazing! It just shows, you know, how how dangerous this is for uh, for uh, for white. And uh, the problem is, is that if you play knight takes c6, this intermediate move is in the game. Then b takes c6 actually attacks the queen on b3. So yeah, it's just completely lost. I mean, white would actually have to um, probably have to have to try a move like uh, e takes f4, allowing black to take the, the pawn on d4 i mean that's probably better than um than any of the other alternatives but yeah i mean that's a big big mistake um yeah quite surprising in a way that uh, that laska missed this um and you know of course what you then say is that you know white really should have been a, a little bit more careful uh, at this stage and just uh, made sure that he could always meet g5 takes f4 with a move with e takes f4 so for example a move like it's not the only thing but i don't know bishop e2 and queen d1 for example just protecting d4 in advance and then getting ready to play a3 and b4 would be you know would be perfect i mean that would be the uh the way to play so um yeah i mean in the game um laska missed this chance and then when g takes f4 knight c6 bc e takes f4 and here laska went uh yeah i mean went uh i suppose you could say all out um basically he didn't want to let white consolidate he wanted really to try and uh and get you know as much play as quickly as possible but it's just not really working queen g7 bishop a6 bishop h5 queen d2 rook g8 bishop e2 good move from marshall um just uh you know offering exchanges you know just to to drive back the black pieces and then this excellent move queen e3 very good uh just um holding everything together d4 g3 um bishop f1 a4 just uh, reminding uh black that uh there's a passed a pawn on there h5 root g2 again a, a you know a very 
a very good move there. And then this move, knight d3, that um, Alekin criticised and caused artificial. He wasn't uh, very impressed with Marshall's play, but um, I think it's a very good move. I mean, uh, this knight on d3 is coming to e5. And once again, it's blocking all black's diagonal attacks against the pawn on d4. So from h8, a1, and uh, also the, the the attack of the bishop on d6 on the pawn on f4. And that knight on e5, you know, especially now this this black king is open. Um, yeah, I mean, the fact that it's attacking g6 and f7 is uh, is not to be sneezed at. I think it's a very good move. You know, uh, I think uh, Marshall did fine here. Um, Rook g7, knight e5. I mean, the only thing that you can say is that it's not easy for um, for white to advance uh, the queenside pawns now, you know. Um, and, yeah, this probably explains Marshall's next move, which was rather impatient. You know, I mean, I think that Marshall could have uh, played quite a few consolidating moves, first of all, uh, before he needed to start thinking about sacrifices. He played this a5 move, and knight c6, and, yeah, I mean, my engine recommends something which is also the, the first thing you think of, really, I think. Uh, takes, takes, and queen b4. I mean, the, the black king <coughs> looks a little bit um, exposed, um, you know, both along the H file and the C file. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I don't think that he's getting mated. And uh, the fact that you're attacking this pawn on B4 and you'll take it with check and then that'll embarrass the white king. I think that's always going to give you, uh, you know, plenty of counterplay there. Um, but Lasker didn't do this. He went queen B6, knight E5. And... Um, yeah, I mean, this is getting a, a little bit awkward. I mean, it's uh, this rook can come to c8. You've got the rook on h2. You know, I can understand why uh, why Marshall did this. Um, Lasker exchanged off the uh, the rooks, and then this very sharp move g4. Um, yeah, I mean, typical Marshall. You know, really, really sharp, um, and uh, and uh, and going for it. You know, and uh, really exploiting the uh, this weakness of the uh, of the black king. Um, and here, um, yeah, Lasker took a, um, a huge decision, um, takes and rook f4, just basically saying to White, well, prove it, prove it then. Where's your attack? And, um, and this position was actually given as a, as a tactical puzzle, uh, in John Nunn's chess course. Um, Alakin pointed out the, uh, the right way to play in his tournament book, although he didn't quite get it right. Um, the best move White had, the very natural move, uh, bishop d3, um, with the idea that um, after bishop h5, I mean, you've got to do something to stop uh, queen h3 check. Um, White's got this gorgeous move, knight h6, threatening rook g8 mate. And now uh, Anakin makes a, a slightly odd mistake. Um, he goes rook f8. And he recommends a move queen g5, but, um, I mean, knight f7 check is... Uh, uh, pretty obvious um um and uh even without an engine and uh queen h6 rook h7 bishop h7 and queen h7 queen uh, f6 check is mate um it's important because uh um well i mean queen g5 looks completely winning as well um but uh, the engine points out this amazing move um with the uh um uh, the amazing idea that um, uh, that well, bishop g6 um, allows bishop f4. Um, I should probably point out that uh, queen g6, queen c1 check is uh, is mate, and uh, bishop g6 allows bishop f4, knight f7, king g7, queen h4, queen c1 checks, king g6 takes takes and king f7 and uh <coughs> yeah my engine gives this position uh, as a draw um well i mean due to the the exposed white king it's very difficult for white to really make something of it i mean it's, he can't move his rook away uh, too easily from g2 um i mean it's all a little bit random but um uh but yeah i mean this uh, uh this bishop g6 is an incredible uh, is an incredible resource uh, but of course knight f7 check is mate in uh, in however many so uh, not a great, uh, not a, not a, not a huge find, uh, you have to say. Um, Marshall, uh, yeah, I thought for a long time. I mean, it reminds me a little bit of this, uh, you know, this uh, episode, um, which you, you might have seen in, in one of my earlier videos uh, in the World Championship match where, where Lasker plays this queen takes, 
uh, G7 and forces Marshall to calculate lines concretely. And somehow Marshall doesn't manage it, you know, and uh, yeah, I don't know, such a good tactician, but somehow, you know, just uh, a crucial moments, maybe found it hard to really buckle down and um, and uh, and calculate stuff. Um, in any case, after Queen E6, Rook F1 and Bishop B5 check, uh, this was apparently what Marshall had missed, despite spending a, you know quite a long time calculating this. And um, he had to play Rook E2, Queen E2, and after Queen F7, um, yeah, I mean, this was uh, this was a, a well a rather disappointing uh, outcome of a mating attack. Um, in actual fact, uh, um, um, yeah, Laska didn't defend perfectly uh, in the coming uh, um, in in the coming moves, and uh, um, yeah, I mean, here Queen takes d five would have been uh, extremely good. Well, probably winning for. Um, uh, for um for marshall but he found he found a way he found a way to get his pieces mixed up his move bishop d2 is very strong uh threatening uh queen b3 check and uh well lasker managed to hold on giving out giving back the piece and uh and marshall even fell into this little uh perpetual uh this little uh stalemate trap uh because after queen e6 it is stalemate well, I mean, Lasker's comment to uh, uh, to this game in his uh, in his fifty selected games was, "Wow, wasn't uh, wasn't wasn't Lasker a, a superb fighter?" And uh, I mean, it's absolutely true. Um, but it was, you know, a hugely interesting game. And um, you know, for me, yeah, I mean, I I, I found this this I, this uh, little psychological thing about uh, Queen A five check trying to uh, to make something of a move that isn't really that useful for your plan, you know, and how. Lasker got into trouble there, and I also found this this whole you know thing around uh, um, the dark squares around uh, you know White's got this bind and this gives him an advantage, but yeah, at the moment that he's he's got to try and expand, uh, that's when his uh, his solid structure becomes vulnerable, um, and also this whole idea um, of you know you don't want to take back with the G pawn and give Black an open file and a chance to combine his major pieces on the king side. You want to make sure that uh, as many files as possible stay closed, you know, and can't be, so that Black can't combine his um, his two rooks. And I mean, to be honest, this is um, a theme, I'm, I'm going on and on about it, but it's a theme that uh, that I've uh, I've noticed so often in the games of Alpha Zero, that um, somehow Alpha Zero against Stockfish, Alpha Zero manages to, to cut uh, uh, Stockfish's position in half, um, just like this bishop on e8 is cutting the black position in half because it's interrupting the coordination between the rook on h6 and the rook on b8, and um, it happens so often. And uh, well, to be honest, I'm seeing it uh, very often nowadays in uh, in the games of these uh, of these great you know strategical players. Um, and you know, I, th I think that this uh, this move, um, you know, gf4 ef4 fits in beautifully into that. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's a very, uh, if you, certainly if you play these sort of stonewall structures ever as black and, you know, you can get them from, uh, from all sorts of openings. I think it's a very useful, uh, useful thing to be, uh, to be aware of. So, um, so there we are. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I certainly enjoyed, uh, analyzing this and, uh, I think that's, uh, going to pretty much conclude our, uh, our look at, uh, at Marshall, uh, Lasker games. Um, I hope you've enjoyed them and I hope you've got, uh, you know, more appreciation just like, uh, like I have now for, uh, for the great American player. I mean, um, I think, you know, as a kid, I saw him, uh, his match result against Laska 8-0 and I, I never lost that feeling of, oh, you know, what a loser, you know, uh, that's how you are, I suppose, as a kid. Um, I think it's only when you get older and you, uh, you have your own share of defeats and, uh, your own share of problems that you realize, you know, that, uh, well, actually, you know, Playing this sort of match against Lasker um, is is not easy at all, and uh, you know even though he lost heavily, it was still um, he was still a fine player and uh, and you know and played some very fine games as well. So well, hope you enjoy that, and uh, well, keep watching my channel for new videos.